हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन चैप्टर सिक्स ग्लोबलाइजेशन एंड सोशल चेंज एंड अवर टॉपिक इज ग्लोबलाइजेशन एंड पॉलिटिकल चेंजेस इन मेनी वेज इट वाज अ मेजर पॉलिटिकल चेंज नेमली अ कोलैप्स ऑफ द अर्स्ट वाइल सोशलिस्ट वर्ल्ड दैट हैजन ग्लोबलाइजेशन and also gave a specific economic and political approach to the economic policies that underpin globalization these changes are often termed as neoliberal economic measures we have already seen that what concrete steps the liberalization policy took in india broadly these policies reflect a political vision of free enterprise which believes that a free rein to market forces will be both efficient and fair it is therefore critical for both state regulation and state subsidies the existing process of globalization in this sense does have a political vision as much as an economic vision however the possibility is that there can be a globalization which is different do exist we thus have the concept of an inclusive globalization that is one which includes all sections of society another significant political development which is accompanying globalization is the growth of international and regional mechanisms for practical collaboration the european union the association of southeast asian nation asean south asian regional conference and more recently south asian federation of trade association safta are just some of the examples that indicate the greater role of regional associations The other political dimension has been the rise of international governmental organizations and international non-government organizations and intergovernmental organization is a body that is established by participating governments and give responsibility for regulating or overseeing a particular domain of activity that is transnational in scope the world trade organization for instance increasingly has a major say in the rules that govern trade practices as the name suggests ingos differ from intergovernmental organizations in that they are not affiliated with government institutions rather they are independent organizations which make policy decisions and address international issues some of the best known ingos are greenpeace the red cross and mnst international medicine san frontiers you can find out more about them now the next topic is globalization and culture there are many ways that globalization affects culture we saw earlier that the over the ages india has had an open approach to cultural influences and have been enriched because of this the last decade has seen major cultural changes leading to fears that our local cultures would be overtaken we saw earlier that our cultural tradition has been very of the kumpadukku or the frog that lives its whole life within a well knows nothing else and is suspicious of everything outside it it talks to no one and argues with no one 
on anything. It merely harbors the deepest suspicion of the outside world. Fortunately for us, we retain our traditional open-ended attitudes to this day. Thus, there are heated debates in our society, not just about political and economic issues, but also about changes in clothes, styles, music, films, languages, body language. You will recall from chapter 1 and 2 how the 19th century reformers and early nationalists also debated on culture and tradition. The issues today are in some ways the same, in some ways different. What is perhaps different is the scale and intensity of change. Now the next topic is homogenization versus globalization of culture. A central contention is that all cultures will become similar, that is homogeneous. Others argue that there is an increasing tendency towards globalization of culture. Globalization refers to the mixing of global with local. It is not entirely spontaneous, nor is it entirely delinking from the commercial interest of globalization. It is a strategy often adopted by foreign firms while dealing with the local traditions in order to enhance their marketability. In India, we find that all the foreign television channels like Star, MTV, Channel 5 and Cartoon Network use Indian languages. Even McDonald's sells only vegetarian and chicken products in India and not its beef products, which are popular abroad. McDonald's goes vegetarian during the Navratri festival. In the field of music, one can see the growth of popularity of Bhangra pop, indie pop, fusion music and even remixes. We have already seen how the strength of Indian culture has been its open-ended approach. We also saw how through the modern period our reformers and nationalists actively debated tradition and culture. Culture cannot be seen as an unchanging fixed entity that can either collapse or remain the same when faced with social change. What is more likely even today is that globalization will lead to the creation of not just new traditional but global ones too. Now the next topic is gender and culture. Very often defenders of a fixed traditional idea of cultural identity defend undemocratic and discriminating practices against women in the name of cultural identity. These could range from a defense of sati to defense of women's exclusion from education and participation in public matters. Globalization can then be taken as a bogey to defend unjust practices against women. Fortunately for us in India, we have been able to retain and develop a democratic tradition and culture that allows us to define culture in a more inclusive and democratic fashion. Now let us wind up the session and thank you very much for engaging yourself with the self-learning podcast.